Hi everyone! <coughs> Konnichiwa! Do you know how to describe what's wrong with yourself when you go to the doctor so that you can get the proper treatment and feel better? My name is Jen and today we're going to talk about 28 different types of health problems and over 10 different treatments. Stay tuned to the very end for some bonus information. First, let's start with symptoms. Symptom means what is wrong with you? What's the matter? What kind of medical or health problem do you have? This is what the doctor is probably going to ask you when you go to visit him. Number one. <coughs> This is cough, cough. The GH at the end of the word is silent. Number two, sneeze, sneeze. Number three, a runny nose. So when your nose is all wet and it just keeps dripping down, you have a runny nose. Number four, when your nose in here feels all really tight, like there's a lot of stuff in it, and even if you blow your nose, it still doesn't seem to come out and it's all stuffed up in here. We have two expressions for this, a stuffy nose, or we will say you are congested. So the next one is a sore throat. This part of your body here inside is called your throat, sore throat. When you are coughing and sneezing and you have a sore throat and a runny nose or a stuffy nose, you probably have a cold. A common expression with cold is to catch a cold. So catch a cold or have a cold. Number seven. Oh, oh, I'm burning up. My forehead is so hot. I have a fever. Or some people say, I have a temperature or a high temperature. Number eight, sometimes when you have a fever, you might also start sweating, sweating, but you will also feel cold at the same time and your whole body just <laughs> So this is called the chills, to have the chills. Number nine, this one happens to me a lot, especially if I'm working on the computer or sitting for a long period of time. I get pain right in here and in here. This is called stiff shoulders. Stiff shoulders are an example of a type of pain, aches and pains that your body will feel. So when you are in pain, there are a couple things we say that aches, ache, the verb is ache. So for example, oh, oh, my head hurts. I have a headache. Mm, oh, my tooth really hurts. I have a toothache. Ah, my back hurts. I have a backache. Oh, my stomach. I have a stomach ache. So for these words, we will use ache. Other times we will say my blah, blah, blah hurts. My blah, blah, blah hurts. Or my blah, blah, blah is in pain. Ache, pain, and hurt. The flu. Okay? So the flu is much worse than a cold. Most people just say the flu. Okay? The flu is actually short for influenza, which is a type of virus. Something that happens a lot in the winter time or if you have allergies or if you've had any eye surgery, your eyes will become really red and really dry and maybe very, very itchy. So, ah, I have dry eyes. Number 13. Ah, oh, I'm so itchy, itchy. The verb is scratch, scratch and itch. So sometimes you might be scratching because number 14, maybe you have a rash, okay? So a rash is some part of your skin like this that is red and inflamed and really, really itchy. So, if you feel itchy and you have a runny nose, maybe you're sneezing a lot, right? And maybe you have runny eyes or dry eyes, you could have allergies, allergies, okay? So we can say to have an allergy or to be allergic to something. For example, one of my good friends 
every single time there's a cat nearby, they will start sneezing and sneezing, and then they will, if they touch the cat, they will feel really, really itchy. So they are allergic to cats. They have an allergy to cats. If you eat the wrong kind of food or if you have some kind of stomach virus, maybe you feel like you're going to be sick. The feeling of, oh, I'm going to throw up. Okay? So that feeling of, oh, mm, I think I'm going to be sick. I think I'm going to be sick is what many people say. The technical word is to feel nauseous. Nauseous. Number 17 is to actually be sick, to vomit or to throw up, toss your cookies or to up chuck, vomit or throw up. Number 18, especially if you're a woman, uh, cramps, cramps. 19. The next one is the feeling of oh, 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 you really have to go to the bathroom and you need to use the washroom right now or you're going to have an accident. So this expression is to have diarrhea. You can't stop pooping. Ah, uh, I have diarrhea, diarrhea. Number 20, the kind of opposite of diarrhea is constipation. So diarrhea, you're going to the bathroom. You need to use that toilet a lot. Constipation, you're sitting there, you're sitting there, uh, 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 and it's just not coming out. The feeling that you want to poop, but you cannot is constipation, to be constipated. Number 21. Oh, I feel like the room is spinning. Oh. This expression is to feel dizzy. To feel dizzy or, oh, I feel faint. Feel dizzy or feel faint. Number 22, if you feel dizzy and you feel faint, you feel like you're going to pass out. If you actually do collapse and pass out, people will say you have fainted, you have passed out, or you have lost consciousness. Number 23, when you are cutting things for dinner in your kitchen, be careful not to cut yourself. The next one is to cut yourself. If you cut yourself, there will be a lot of blood and then you will say, I am bleeding. So cut yourself, you see blood, and then the verb is you are bleeding, bleeding. Number 24, another common problem that can happen in the kitchen is that if you are not careful, you could burn yourself. Ow! Burn yourself. Burn your hand. Number 25. Sometimes if you walk into something, bang into something, you will maybe hit your arm or hit your leg. And then after you will see a kind of bluish, purple, yellow, spot on your skin that's really sensitive if you touch it. That is called a bruise. So to get a bruise. Number 26. Sometimes if you are not careful, you could get some part of your body to become bigger. It'll start to get swollen. To get swollen. Okay. So here's an example of a swollen ankle. The next one is to sprain your ankle or sprain your wrist. So if you twist your ankle or you twist your wrist like this and you fall, you could get a sprain. It hurts, but it's not as serious as the next one, which is to break your leg or break your arm, to break a bone. So those were more than 28 different symptoms or health problems that someone might have. So next, we're going to take a look at over 10 different treatments, remedies, cures that can help people to get better or recover or treat these various health issues. Number one, you need to drink more water. Drink more water or drink more orange juice. Number two, get plenty of rest. Rest means to sleep and relax. Number three, Achoo! a common thing that will help you if you have a cold, a runny nose, a stuffy nose, a sneeze, is this. This is called a tissue. 
but most people in Canada will call this a Kleenex. Okay, so a Kleenex or a tissue. Number four, another common way to treat health issues is with medicine. Okay, so there's many different types of medicine. The most common would be pills or capsules. Number five, if your sickness, if your health issue is really, really bad, then you will have to go to the doctor. Okay? The doctor or physician. Physician is another word for a doctor. So you're going to go to the doctor and the doctor is going to prescribe some special medicine or special type of treatment for you. So he will give you what's called a prescription. Okay. A prescription is a piece of paper with the doctor's name, your name, and what type of medicine you need to take and what instructions are for that medicine. Then what you do is you will take this piece of paper, take this prescription to a place called a pharmacy. Okay. So a pharmacy is a place where you will pick up special medicine. Okay. So you can see the word here, pharmacy. So you go to the pharmacy, you give them your prescription, you wait a while, then they will give you the medicine that the doctor told you you should take. Okay? So the vocabulary words from here are physician, doctor, physician, prescription, and pharmacy. Get your prescription from the pharmacy. Number six, if you have dry eyes, a great treatment is eye drops. Number seven, if you cut yourself, you need a band-aid. Put a band-aid on your cut. Number eight, the next type of treatment is usually the type of um, cure that the doctor is going to give to you if you have some kind of rash or skin condition. It will be a lotion, an ointment, or a cream. Okay, so these are things that you will just apply on, put on the area that has the problem. Ointment, lotion, or cream. Number nine, this is ice. Ice is a good treatment if something is swollen. So if my wrist here starts to become really swollen and hurts, I can put some ice on my wrist. So ice is a noun, but ice can also be a verb, okay? I am icing my wrist. If the medical problem is really bad, you need emergency medical assistance. So in Canada and the US, the number that you should call is 911, 911. So if you call that number for a medical emergency, the special vehicle that's going to come is called an ambulance an ambulance and the name of the people who are working on the ambulance are called paramedics paramedics so if you have a medical emergency you need an ambulance with paramedics the next medical thing i'm going to talk about is something that usually you see elderly people using but if someone has a back injury or a hip injury or something wrong with their legs they will use this as well this is a cane, a cane. Similar to a cane, if someone has broken their leg, then they will have crutches. If you just have one, it's called a crutch, but most people generally will use two. These are called crutches in English, crutches. If someone's inability to walk is really bad, they will use a wheelchair, wheelchair. This is a wheelchair in English. If someone has broken any part of their body, say their arm or their leg, they will get a cast, a cast, a flu shot, a needle. An operation, surgery, to go under the knife. So today, you guys learned over 28 different types of medical problems and more than 10 different ways to treat them. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, when was the last time that you were sick or injured and what was wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Mina, thank you. Gabate ne. Jane. If you know someone who is sick or injured, do you know what you should say to them in English? There are three different things that I would recommend that most native speakers will use. 
The first is get well soon. Get well soon. The second one is I hope you feel better soon or just feel better soon. And the final one, which is a little bit more formal, would be I wish you a speedy recovery. So the next time you know somebody who is sick or injured, please try using one of these three expressions. Thank you.